Hi there, my name is Alex Kirby. I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm also the executive director of Mont Paul. And this is the fourth in our series of videos on substance abuse in the adolescent brain. Uh, in past videos, we've talked about what constitutes a disease. We've talked a little bit about neuroanatomy. Um, and in this video, what I want to talk about is what is the defect? So remember, a disease is an organ that gets a defect that manifests symptoms. Well, what is that defect that characterizes or that, that has occurred uh, in, the addict, in the addict, or in this case, the addicted brain, in the, the brain of the addict. And I want to start by saying that people in this field have to approach it with a lot of humility because like so many diseases, there's just a whole lot that's not understood. Uh, in the case of addiction, we know how to treat it quite effectively, um, but we can't predict, for example, who's going to become an addict or who's not going to become an addict uh, based on any sense of, I mean, there's no, there's correlation, but there's no causation that we know of. So what I'm going to be describing to you, and this is what happens in the brain of the addict, uh, as distinct from somebody who has used a lot of drugs or abused a lot of drugs, but decided that enough was enough and stopped. Uh, the addict can't do that. Um, so well, what happens? Well, I'm going to go back to the example of eating a hamburger uh, from a couple of videos ago. We eat a hamburger, it reinforces our behavior by releasing a little bit of dopamine. There are things in hamburgers that across the millennia of, as we evolved as a species, we're kind of hard to come by, so things like salt and fat and protein, you know, our body wanted to tell us, keep doing that because that helps me survive as an organism, so it tells us, keep, it motivates us to keep doing that by releasing dopamine. In the case of drugs of abuse, um, it releases massive amounts of dopamine. So, for example, imagine that a ham bite of a hamburger releases 10 units of dopamine. Well, um, Smoking heroin might release, think of it as re releasing like 10,000 units of dopamine, okay? And one of you might say, well, where does it release them? And I'm gonna give you just a brief bit of neuroanatomy. I mean, it's, the brain is a pretty complex organ, but uh, think of it as a very elaborate electrochemical process. Um, and it's characterized by related neurons. So imagine this is one neuron, this is another neuron. And these are, each end is called synapse and there's a synaptic gap. Well. We, we pass information back and forth through chemicals called neurotransmitters. And in the case of dopamine, we take eat a hamburger, it releases 10 units of dopamine. Dopamine sits here in the synaptic gap and then comes on over here and attaches to this and releases some pleasure down this way, okay? Or gives us pleasure signals, okay? Well, the same thing happens when you smoke heroin, but this time it releases 10,000 uh, units of dopamine and completely overwhelms all the receptor sites on this, gives you a massive experience of pleasure. And you think, well, that's pretty cool. Remember, we're talking about the addicted brain here, though. So it's, it's, they take, you get 10,000 released units, and the first time he does it, it gets all 10,000 units, okay? But the brain will attempt to regulate itself. If you keep doing this, if you keep flooding yourself with dopamine, the brain's gonna say, you know, I don't need all this dopamine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off some of those receptor sites. Uh, it's kind of overwhelming there. I mean, sure, it doesn't think like that. We have to use metaphors to describe this process. Even neuroscientists do on some level. Um, so what they do is they shut some of these off, okay? Well, in the addict, now he smoked, say he smoked a little bit of heroin, now he's got to smoke a little bit more heroin because the brain's not as receptive to that pleasure anymore. It's not as receptive to 10,000 units. So now he has to smoke enough heroin to release 20,000 units. Of, of dopamine to get the same amount of pleasure because the brain has lost its sensitivity to dopamine. It's, it's turning down the gain, if you will. It's like the microphone is not as, the volume isn't turned up as loud. You've got to really um, keep cranking it in there. And that actually characterizes the disease process in that it's progressive. As the brain becomes more tolerant, the process that I'm describing here is called tolerance. Okay, so um, an addict who's been using heroin for six months can take a very large quantity of heroin and get high, but somebody who, who's never done heroin before takes the same amount, they're gonna die of an overdose because the, the, the addict for, who's been using for six months has developed tolerance, and tolerance is the body's capacity. Well, in this case, it's turned off its sensitivity to the drug, okay? It's keeping lowering and lowering and lowering the drug. The, the addict keeps taking more and more and more. Uh, so it, it will be described as a progressive disease that ends in treatment or death or jail. Um, but it's, it's progressive, so that's something to keep in mind is that it like, keeps going more and more, the addict has to keep doing more and more, and they'll game it a little bit. You'll hear addicts tell stories of not, get, not using for a week because they know that 
they can't get enough drug to get high, so if they can just crave and just sit still for a week and then use, they're gonna get that much higher, okay? So the body starts to, and that's what the disease looks like, okay? It's this, this gradual reduction in dopamine receptivity in the brain. And if you look, if you, know, if you tag isotopes and, that, are, that bond to dopamine receptors and do brain scans, you'll see there's just, this, it starts look, the brain starts looking like Swiss cheese. There's just holes in it where the brain is starting to turn off uh, massive parts of the brain because it's so overwhelmed, it's simply trying to get itself back to some regulated point that it had before the disease process became active. So that's the damage, okay? Now the other important thing to do is that th this occurs, the pleasure occurs within the midbrain. Well, what's going on in the forebrain while all this happening? The part of our brain that tells us what we should do and shouldn't do in response to negative consequences. Well, the brain has, again, this is the survival part of our brain. This is the one that says, have sex, eat food. Uh, for the addict, it's take drugs. It has tagged um, the drug with survival salience, okay? It thinks it needs the drug to survive. Um, and what it does to get that drug is it turns off anything that gets in its way. Well, the forebrain says, stealing is not good. I can't have my forebrain telling me not to steal because I need to steal to get my drug, or I, uh, um, prostitute myself. I lived my whole life thinking prostitution was not something I really was interested in. Now I'm an addict, I'm going to do it to get my drugs and addicts do it all the time. So they, it turns off the forebrain and what that's called is frontal hypofunctionality. So it's frontal, I mean, it's the frontal lobe, the cerebral cortex up here. Uh, hypo is the opposite of hyper, so it's turning things down and it's turning down its functionality. Okay, and again, if you watch on brain scans, addicts in the heat of craving, for example, in that period when they feel miserable, they're not high and they need their drug um, to get back to some semblance of normal, preferably to get high, but just to feel not feel crappy, um, the forebrain gets turned off because it's, it, it has evolved the capacity to do that in a desperate attempt to save the organism. Well, it, it's mistakenly thinking that using the drug is gonna save the organism. Um, and there's a mechanism and there's a well adapt, I mean, over the millennia as a species, it's served us well, introduce uh, drugs of abuse and we've got a bigger problem. So I hope that makes clear what the damage is. It, it's a downregulation of dopamine receptivity in the midbrain such that the person has to take increasing amounts of drug to get the same high. Um, and they can't, when they're not high, they crave and they can't experience pleasure. And they do all kinds of awful and reprehensible things in, in, in a desperate, desperate attempt to get back to some semblance of normalcy, at least from their perspective. So I hope that makes it clear for you. I hope you'll join us for future videos. Um, and thank you for watching.